6.31 a.m. Just making a quick coffee and I'll wait to the shoot. So this is part two of the previous vlog and shoot number two of the week. On this shoot, we were filming a promotional film for a regional branch of the NHS, working mostly with real staff and real patients. We wanted to try and highlight some of the great work that these people do in a grounded but cinematic promotional film. We were shooting it on a Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pro G2 with EF lenses and the Dream Effects filter by Prism Lens FX. I feel like this is always every cinematographer's first priority whenever they go into a location, and that is to find where the switches for the house lights are. And straight away we flick through all of them to figure out which lights are on which switch, and figuring out how much control we have of the light that is being presented to us by the environment. Luckily on this occasion, the lights in this room were grouped together in a way that meant one switch turned off about two or three rows of the ceiling lights closest to camera, which actually created, for me at least, the perfect amount of contrast for the image that we wanted. It created a nice shadow side for our talent without it being too dramatic or too moody. Because even though we want to give this film the cinematic flair, we don't want it to look too much like we're filming a drama. So we want to find a decent balance of high key, but also a bit of contrast just to create more depth to the images. Do you have what other intensity filters do you have? Or do you think that's probably about enough? Yeah, it's better. I like it. Just doing to the lights and stuff. Yeah. See the lights. Okay. What, yeah. How, what intensity is that one? Yeah, that's like a half, so that's like the max. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I like that. Cool. Yours? Thanks. Uh, Jamie's Hi, guys. Not filming just yet, so don't, don't panic. I'm just checking what the lighting looks like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, naturally I don't mind how that looks really. I think it would be nice to set up the Falcon Eyes, just so we've got that on standby. I did think it would have been nice to have set up a larger light source, something like a book light, but working mostly solo, I didn't have the time to be able to set something like that up. So the most logical option to me was to set up the Falcon Eyes light mat, just to help wrap the practical light that we were getting from the ceiling around our subjects. And because it is so lightweight, I knew if we needed to, it would provide us an option to boom the light over our subjects. But thankfully, we didn't need to do that. Okay, camera okay, set. Quiet on set, please. And action. Good morning, Karen. Can I make you more comfortable? Yes, please. How are you? So are you feeling okay? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Just let me know when that's okay. Okay. How's that? Yeah, okay. okay. Thank you. And cut that. One of the recurring elements to the film was video portraits of all the staff that work at the hospital. So what I'm trying to do here is find the correct angle for this portrait we wanted to do of this first staff member. And again, trying to maximize time efficiency and to keep things simple. I purposely positioned the camera so it would bring our subject closer towards the darker side of the room to create more natural contrast to the image. And then we keyed the portrait with our Falcon Eyes LED light map. So rather than having to bring in flags or artificial negative fill, we were able to create it quite naturally by just bringing the subject closer to the side of the room where we turn the lights off. And I sometimes think this is one of the key things to have as a DOP is that it can be quite easy to almost want to overcomplicate things and make things look more impressive for ego's sake. But I think there's more value sometimes in knowing how to execute things in a simple way that obviously creates great results, but saves you and the production time. Because that is always the one thing that we never have enough of on these shoots is time. So if you can find ways to create great looking images, but do it in a simple way, that is where you can bring a lot of value as a cinematographer. I think at least. Great, and cut. Perfect. Thank you. Beautiful. Um, cool. For the next scene, we were having to shoot in this really tiny corner of this room, which is never ideal, as it's very difficult to create depth and shape when working in such an enclosed space. But the point of this scene was to show a patient ringing this bell. 
which is to signify that they've completed their treatment. We were very limited in terms of what we could do for this scene. But what I decided to do was to have the overhead lights blacked out just so we could start with a blank canvas and add in our own artificial light, which again, we used the light mat for and we boomed it over our subject. And just simply by doing this, rather than using the house lights, it just allowed us to have more control. And whilst it's not my favorite shot or scene of the video, I think considering our limitations, just having this one light mat above our subject created a very nice look for this scene. And whilst it might not be the best shots that are gonna be going in your showreel or your portfolio, and as long as that scene serves the story that you're trying to tell. Ultimately, that's the thing that matters most when it comes to these productions. Camera set. Ready, Geraldine? Yeah. And action. <laughs> Great. And cut that. Once we wrapped that scene, we did a very long unit move through the hospital to the next location, which is where we were filming a consultation scene between a family and a staff member. Once we established where our wide shot was going to be for this scene, we knew that we were going to use the window lights to the left as our motivation for our key light. So once again, as you can guess, I brought in the light mat and boomed that over just to help accentuate the natural light that we were getting from the windows that was gonna help key our subjects. This was quite a small room to work in, so again, to try and get the most depth, I backed the camera up to the very far end of one of the rooms and tried to move the chairs that our talent were going to be sitting in as far as we could to the other side of the room. We also closed the blinds just to help with exposure levels so that we weren't just gonna have a big block of white in our frame coming from the windows, which would have been very distracting and taken away our viewers' attention to the subject of the scene itself. And I also put up a few blackout curtains on the right side of the room just to help bring in a little bit more contrast since we weren't able to turn off the ceiling lights that were outside of the room. For the next scene, we were filming in this theater space where we were shooting a patient being maneuvered from one of the stretcher beds onto this table as if it was an emergency procedure they were having to go through. Hmm. So what was happening here was that I had already begun setting up our key light, which was the light map again. But once I had seen the blocking of the scene, I realized that I had set our key light up in the wrong spot of the room. I basically thought that the patient's head was going to be where their feet was. So it just meant that I was going to have to rearrange the key light to the other side of the room, which wasn't going to take too long, but it would have been better if I had just discussed with the director and the staff first thing when we entered the space, what the blocking was going to be and where our patient was gonna end up in this scene and which way their head was gonna be facing on this bed. And even though it didn't take long to reposition the light, because we were working in this very congested room with lots of equipment, lots of staff, it meant we had to be extra cautious and careful when maneuvering equipment around. So actually getting this key light into the right position took a little bit longer than it would have done in a normal environment. So it's just small little things like this that myself and all cinematographers need to be more aware of when working on set. But it can be a, an easy thing to do when you're working on a project where you don't get to see the locations or the blocking of a scene before the actual day of the shoot. There you go. Can you look towards the camera for a sec for us? Just see how this looks. So this was the setup for another video portrait of one of the staff members. We kept the light mat in the same position as it was for the rest of the scene and it created a very nice overhead key. And for the backlight, we actually utilized one of these overhead lights that they had in, in the theater. I don't know what you'd call it, but it's basically had these three circular lights that they would obviously use to see what it is that they're doing when working on patients. But we just positioned it in frame to act as a practical, but then also as our backlight for the subject. It was a bit hot in terms of exposure, but I actually quite liked how that looked. It made it look intentional, but also at the same time unintentional. It made it look very real. It didn't look like a light source has been carefully and precisely placed to create this perfect outline around our subject. And I kind of liked the somewhat messiness of it. It just, again, made it look more realistic in my opinion. For this next scene, we were filming a staff interaction with a patient. Like in the first location of the day, I straight away came in and turned off all the ceiling lights just to see what natural light we were getting from the windows. And also because 
the ceiling lights were a lot warmer than the natural daylight we were getting. They were more of a tungsten color temperature. So I decided I wanted to just go with the daylight that was coming from the windows behind the beds. And the window at the very far end of the room was actually giving us a nice shaft of light on the back wall, which created a nice bit of texture for the background of our shot. We then keyed in from the far side of frame, just so we could have a nice shadow side on our actress who was playing the patient in the bed. And I purposely positioned them in this middle bed so that we would have a bit of depth to the shot, but also give us enough room to be able to do this pushing that we wanted to do for the opening shot. Mm -hmm. How are you this morning? How do you feel? Yeah, I'm feeling a bit better. You look a lot better. I brought you some tea and toast. Oh. I hope you're feeling hungry. Thank you so much. And cut that. That shot turned out quite nice. It could have actually been used in a wanna, but we did have to shoot a few inserts just to give us options in the edit, just in case the pace of the film needed to be increased and be a little bit faster. But after shooting that little section, we then shot a portrait of our actress, same as we did with the staff members, keyed in with the light mat. We used an light tube for our backlight, rigging it up to one of the curtain rails in the background. And then I had our producer come in with a bit of negative fill with one of those giant five in one reflectors just to help bring in a little bit of extra contrast in because even though we draw the blinds on the windows they were still bringing in a bit too much fill for the look we wanted to go for and then the final setup for this production was in a surgery theater i believe we were basically just filming one of the surgeons in the hospital essentially taking off his scrubs masks and gloves as if he was finishing a long shift similar to the previous theater space that we were in they had two of these overhead lights for when the surgeons are working on patients. And they just look great. They look really fantastic. So again, we used them in the shot as practicals to backlight our subject. And it meant we were able to work a little bit quicker with this setup. And as we have done with this whole production, keyed in with the light map on the far side of the subject so that we can get a shallow side towards camera. And it once again just created a lovely image for what we wanted to get for this production. Whilst the lighting for this production has been incredibly simple and pretty much just followed the exact same formula throughout each scene that we've shot, it felt like this was the best way to approach things, just to make sure we stayed on schedule and so that we could get through all the shots that we wanted to get. It obviously would have been nice to implement maybe a little bit more creativity into the way things were lit, but as I mentioned before, when you're working to tight schedules and with quite a small crew, it can benefit the production more to just stick with simple setups. They can still create great results, but don't eat too much into the time that we have available. That's it for this production. There was a few other scenes that we shot throughout the two days, but I unfortunately don't have any behind the scenes of that. I must have run out of battery on the 360 camera, so it unfortunately didn't capture footage for everything that we shot. But I just wanted to highlight a few of the scenes that we did manage to capture some behind the scenes for and just show the process of what the shoot was like.